Our guest today is Professor Peter Singer. Peter Singer is a professor of bioethics at Princeton University. He is the author of Animal Liberation and also of The Life You Can Save. And I'm going to ask him today what he thinks the future of meat might look like in a post-COVID world. I hope that meat doesn't have a future in a post-COVID world, but I accept that that's going to take quite some time. Uh, it's not going to happen immediately. But I hope that the COVID-19 pandemic coming on top of past pandemics and epidemics will make us realize that eating animals poses a major global health risk and that the costs are enormous and they're not borne only by the meat eaters themselves nor by the animals but by everybody on the planet whether they eat meat or not. Uh, I say this because we've seen it over and over again that epidemics and pandemics have come from eating meat. In the case of COVID-19 we know that it came from the Wuhan wet market, uh, probably from the consumption of wild animals, uh, possibly bats or possibly pangolins, which carry the virus and got to humans that way. And so there's been a major movement to ban wet markets and especially wet markets that sell wildlife. But that's too narrow a focus because if we look at past pandemics and epidemics, some of them have also come from wildlife. Uh, Ebola is believed to have come from the consumption of bats, for example. And SARS uh, is also likely to have come from eating wild animals in China. And swine flu actually killed more people than uh, COVID-19 has killed so far. Uh, possibly as many as 575,000 people died from swine flu. It didn't create as much attention in affluent countries because they were mostly people in developing countries. But uh, it almost certainly came from uh, factory farms in the United States, uh, probably North Carolina. And uh, it's a bit ironic now that uh, the United States is calling for compensation from China for a virus that originated there when they caused so much damage from U.S factory farms previously. Factory farms are more or less an ideal breeding laboratory for viruses. So I do think that we have to uh, change this system dramatically. Uh, and if we do abolish factory farms, as I believe we should, then uh, there, it, it won't be possible to produce as much meat. But mostly I think this replacement will have to come either from plant-based foods, uh, including plant-based foods that uh, made to resemble meat. It may also come from cultured meat, from meat grown at the cellular level. So um, I think the future of meat could be very different. Given that previous pandemics have had a similar origin, uh, why do you think that this time we will see the type of behavior change you are looking for when we did not see it before? Well, one reason why we have so much more attention to COVID-19 is because it is affecting people in affluent countries. I think that does give it more attention and uh, more focus. But the question is, of course, whether this will really continue or whether people will kind of forget it once it's over and say, well, we've dealt with that. Um, who knows, you know, maybe it won't happen again or it won't happen again during the time that I'm in office anyway. So I I'm, I'm, couldn't say that I'm 100% confident that uh, factory farming uh, as well as wet markets will end. But I do think that there will be um, a more concerted effort to change these things. My surprise is that you haven't yet raised the ethical argument. Uh, you have raised the argument of fear. Uh, do you think a long-term shift can come about on the basis of fear alone without people also buying the ethical argument that you have been making? The reason I didn't raise the ethical argument is because you were asking specifically about the future after COVID-19. And of course, the ethical argument has been around for a long time. I've been making it since I published Animal Liberation in 1975. And I do believe it's had some impact. Definitely things have progressed. But I wasn't optimistic that the ethical argument alone would be enough to bring about the wide scale spread sweeping changes that we need. Perhaps the ethical argument combined with uh, fear 
of uh, another pandemic as as damaging or possibly even you know more serious we could get one that is as contagious as COVID-19 and as deadly as some of the uh, other ones we've had before maybe the fear of that happening will lead to change that the ethical argument alone and also the concern about climate change which is another big issue with uh, eating meat um, that they were not able to move people uh, prior to COVID-19.